Hi, my name is Christopher Anatra. I'm the president and founder of a computer software technology company called NECS Incorporated. NECS creates a specialized line of software called Entree, which was created for the specialized needs of the food distribution industry. A food distributor is someone that has a warehouse, they stock large quantities of food, they have a fleet of trucks, and they make deliveries to grocery stores and restaurants, etc. We've been doing this for over 25 years, so we have a lot of experience in this industry. We have over 2,000 clients that use our software that depend on it for their day-to-day -day operations. I'm making this video for my clients to explain some possible causes for changes to their data and how it relates to quantum physics and a phenomena that's been called the Mandela Effect. First off, what do I mean by changes to your data? Over the last three to four years, there's been a growing amount of NECS clients that have been calling in saying that the numbers on their reports and dashboards do not appear to be accurate. Now this is something that causes NECS, our technical support department, to spend a large amount of time and resources helping customers figure out what's going on and if the reports are accurate or not. This video is not to make an excuse for a software bug or corrupted data in your Entree data tables. When the data is manually audited, including going back to hard copy invoices, etc., purchase orders, the data on reports and dashboards is proven to be accurate and correct. This issue causes hours and days, sometimes weeks, of wasted time for both NECS, technical support, and our clients. What is happening? I believe that NECS is the first technology company to come out in the open to expose what is happening that is causing, sometimes critical, mostly unexplainable, deviations in your data. It's okay if after you're presented with this information, you are confused, you have more questions, or you even think that I, as the president and founder of a software company, am a little eccentric or out there. That's okay. One thing I want to stress is that the entire staff at NECS, which is almost 40 employees, appreciates and cares about your business. We feel we have the best software without question for food distribution. My team of 10 programmers sincerely cares to provide the best software with some important new products that we're going to be releasing in 2020. My team of 11 technical support staff, they truly also care and they want to ensure your experience with our software is the best and of course all your data is completely accurate. So let's begin. For example, you might look at a report or a dashboard and know from your memory if one of your customers purchases much more or less of a certain item than you expected. It would raise some red flags in your mind. Well, NECS client data is very specific to a specific NECS client. For example, if you regularly sold 10 cases of pepperoni to Joe's Pizza every month, another client in another state would have no idea about that. Instead, a really good way to illustrate that your data is changing has to do with your product descriptions, especially with descriptions of items that are common that we all know. What do I mean? Let's start with an example, the avocado. Many of my clients are produce distributors and they sell a lot of avocados. The most popular type of avocado is the, what's it called, H-A blank S. What do you think? H-A blank S. What goes in the blank? Well, the answer is another S. H-A-S-S. -S. Has. Did you think it was Haas? H-A-A-S? Look it up. Google it. The Haas avocado, H-A-A-S, has never existed. It has always been called Has. H-A-S-S. -S. The story of how these avocados were discovered has also changed. In the past, from my research, they were crossbred by a German botanist named Rudolf Haas, H-A-A-S. I specifically remember reading about his story. However, now, you can Wikipedia this, they were accidentally discovered growing in the backyard of a post office worker named Rudolf Haas. Now, if you thought it was actually Haas, that's okay. There's actually no wrong answers. 
Now, does this mean I or possibly you just have a really bad memory? As a food distributor, you want to make sure you spell your items correctly on your purchase orders, your invoices, etc., especially because if it's spelled wrong, you may not get paid. Now, when you go ahead and you research this for yourself on Google, you're going to come across something called the Mandela Effect. I'm going to address that soon and what it means because it is actually key to beginning to understand what's going on. And it's also very important to understand that these changes may be completely obvious and appear incorrect to you, but others may say, of course, they've always been called a Hass avocado. This is one more layer which makes this phenomena difficult to understand. Let's look at another example. Let's move on to the apple. A very popular type of apple and the National Apple of Canada is, is it the Macintosh apple or is it the McIntosh apple? The answer is McIntosh. Did you think it was Macintosh? This information change is also noteworthy because Apple Computer had released the Apple Macintosh computer in 1984, which we now know to be incorrectly named. They should have named it the Apple McIntosh computer. Let's look at another example. Stuffing is one of those foods we all eat around Thanksgiving. And I know that many of my clients sell a lot of stuffing mix around that time of year. Have you ever heard of a type of stuffing mix named Stouffer's Stovetop Stuffing? Think about it, Stouffer's Stovetop Stuffing. Impossible! Stouffer's Stovetop Stuffing has never existed. This stuffing mix was introduced by General Foods in 1972. It was then purchased by Kraft in 1995. It's never been called Stouffer's Stovetop Stuffing. Kraft reports at least 60 million boxes of their stuffing are sold a year. That's a lot of stuffing. The tagline is, if it's not stovetop, it's not Thanksgiving. I want to stress that this is not our software making these changes. Changes in data is a phenomena that software technology companies like NECS have been noting, most especially as it affects our bottom line and requires more technical support resources. Now there's a whole other list of these things. I'm just going to name off of some changes that might sound familiar to you. Fruit Loops cereal. Fruit Loops is always spelled F-R-U-I-T. Now it's spelled F-R-O-O-T. It's always been that way since 1963 which is really interesting because I always used to say that unless sugar is a fruit, someone's going to be sued. And I guess their attorneys must have heard me in another timeline or something. And now it's F-R-O-O-T. Another one is cup of noodle soup is now called cup noodles. And it's been that way since 1971. Scotch guard products are replaced with G-A-R-D instead of G-U-A-R-D. It's been that way since 1952. It just doesn't look right. Brussels sprouts are now Brussels sprouts. Say that 10 times fast. I don't think I can. Van de Camp's pork and beans is now Van Camp pork and beans. It's been that way since the 1880s. A uh, whiteout that they used to use on the typewriters in the old fashioned days is now spelled W-I-T-E out. It's been that way since 1956. Liquid plumber, instead of plumber being spelled like plumber, it's P-L-U-M-R. And it's been that way since 1969. And for those of my clients that service the nursing home industry, Depends Adult Diapers is replaced with Depend Adult Diapers. It went from Depends to Depend. That doesn't make any sense. What is going on? Quantum physics states that there are an infinite amount of parallel universes and that the nature of our universe and all others in the multiverse is that they are holographic. As a reference, you can read a book called The Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot, which is all about quantum physics. It came out in the 90s. It's a de facto standard about, about this subject. Others in the mainstream world have been noting these types of changes and have coined the phrase the Mandela Effect to describe what's happening. What is the Mandela Effect? It was named after Nelson Mandela. In 2009, there were over 10,000 people on an internet site called Reddit that acknowledged a distinct memory of him dying in prison in the late 1990s. There were riots in the street. In fact, I remember seeing the headline newspapers of uh, people rioting in South Africa. 
However, he did not actually die until December 5th, 2013. What's going on? Other popular Mandela effects include the JFK assassination. For example, I always remember there being four people in the car, the driver, the Secret Service person in the, in the front, JFK and Jackie O in the back. Now there's six people in the car and the car looks different and it's the governor of Texas and his wife are in the car and the governor of Texas gets shot in the leg and all these things happen, it's a different angle, all these things happen differently in the Zabruder film. The Berenstein Bear children books have changed. They used to be called Berenstein Bears and now they've always been known as the Berenstain Bears. Over 10,000 Mandela effects have been logged and confirmed. It also includes changes in human anatomy. For example, I always remember that our heart was in our chest, you know, slightly to the left. So you put your hand over your heart and your, your, that's where your heart was. But now your heart is actually in the exact center of your chest. There have been new animals that have crept into the vernacular that are common that I have never seen before. Even the location of continents on our planet has changed. I remember the time when South America used to be under North America, not pushed way out towards Africa, which doesn't make any sense. How come they didn't discover South America first? Because it's maybe a two-day boat ride. I don't know. Well, if you research this or ask an official source, such as Wikipedia, the Mandela effect means you are having a confabulation or it is a mass misremembering of an event. A confabulation is a false or a distorted memory. So if you clearly remember Stouffer's stovetop stuffing, you are having a false distorted memory. Really? If millions of other people all share the memory of a product called Stouffer's stovetop stuffing, and don't forget that there are 60 million boxes of this sold every year, so there are people out there that remember it this way. You're all having a mass misremembering of something that never existed? What? <laughs> In the world of quantum physics, everything is data. Even our DNA is software. It's source code and it's data which contains the blueprint of who we are. It's really quantum physics at work. What is a quantum computer? I find them extremely fascinating. A company called D-Wave out of Vancouver, Canada has created and sells the world's most advanced quantum computer. It can solve problems faster than all the computer technology combined currently existing on this planet can't. And you can visit their site for more information. The president of D-Wave has stated publicly and in large technology gatherings that the way they work is by exploiting the resources of parallel universes. The number of parallel universes it can exploit is measured in something called qubits or quantum bits. This is important to note because it lays the groundwork to begin to understand what is happening. It's all related to quantum physics and parallel universes. This is science, this is math. Now, I bet you never thought you'd see me doing a video like this. So just as Stouffer's stovetop stuffing never existed in our reality, or something else like Haas avocados changing to Haas in our universe or timeline or whatever you want to call it, such is the same with your specific entree data. NECS is going to continue to help you verify all your report and dashboard information. Don't worry about that. We're going to be here for you. But it's important that you at least be aware of this as a very real possibility. I say trust yourself. Trust your memory. These things are not group misrememberings or confabulations or signs that you have Alzheimer's disease. Research this for yourself. We're living in a very special time and th these things are like an alarm clock going off to either awaken you or hit the snooze button. Now, I have a lot more information about this I'd like to share. So if you're interested in this topic and you'd like to hear more, just hit the like button. Uh, feel free to share this link, etc. And Let's continue the conversation because this is just your introduction to it. I don't want it to end here. And if you'd like to hear more, I don't mind sharing it with you. So thank you for the time you spent watching this video and I hope to talk to you more about this subject.